everyone. I want to welcome you to Unicon's um, Q4 quarterly briefing for Aquila. As you can see uh, from the agenda here, once I've introduced the Unicon Aquila team, we plan to review Unicon's open source support strategy um, and how our open source uh, support program feeds that, discuss what's happening in the Aquila community, um, and then special community highlight, we'll turn it over to our colleagues at BYU-Idaho to highlight a tool they've created and used with Aquila. We'll review the development items that Unicon has completed as part of our ongoing development for the Aquila open source project, talk about some upcoming events, and then wrap up the call with uh, open discussion and forum. So uh, next slide. Without further ado, let me introduce myself. Erin uh, McGarrahan, um, I have been in the ed tech world for almost 20 years. For the past four or five years, I have been the director of open source support um, here at Unicon. I also lead the Aquila support team for our Aquila open source support subscribers. I was the PM who led the effort to open source Aquila um, in the Aperio community. And I PM'd or uh, and are currently PMing multiple migration projects from Pearson Hosting to Unicon Hosting uh, for Aquila customers who do not wish to host Aquila themselves. And in times past, I've worked on other open source applications like Sakai, CAS, Shibboleth, and Grouper. Um, and I'm excited to sit in and, and, and listen to uh, my team speak today. Thank you. Chris? Yeah, so. My name is Chris Beach. I'm a software developer with Unicon. I've uh, been a support analyst for Aquila for the past several years um, and have switched over to, to more of a software development role. I work closely with Aaron on the Aquila projects that, that Unicon is involved with and also um, help out with other open source software such as uPortal um, in Unicon. Uh, hi, this is Drew Wills. I'm I'm a software architect here at Unicon, and I uh, have uh, a long familiarity and association with Aperio. I was a member of the team that uh, helped to open source Equella last year, uh, and I look forward to continuing involvement with Equella as it sort of blossoms at Unicon. Okay, so why do we have this call? So as a reminder, um, with all open source software, the code and ability to install and use Aquila uh, free of charge without a license key is available to anyone um, you know, who wants to. Releases, enhancements, bug fixes um, are really driven in the responsibility of the community. And that is uh, organizations who are using Aquila can make changes to it and submit those changes back to the community. Organizations can contract with service providers to make those changes. Say you would like to see the administration console, you know, be a web tool uh, rather than how it is now. Someone could sponsor that work and, and hire a service provider like Unicon to do so. And community members like Unicon and others submit changes themselves. So Unicon is a commercial affiliate of Aperio. We're happy to develop open source software on behalf of our clients. And as we do, do so, that code typically gets contributed back to the community. Additionally, we offer the open source support program for folks who host Aquila on-prem. This program is designed um, to provide commercial support for uh, your open source installation. And built into that subscription is the development that Unicon does on behalf of our subscribers. So what that means is this meeting that we're having today to inform and educate Aquila users on latest community news and developments is brought to you by our Unicon open source support subscribers. And the development that we'll talk about, um, albeit you know, it's getting off the ground and it will be more robust as we move forward here, the development that, that this team does for Aquila is support inspired and supporter guided. So thank you to our support subscribers for Aquila and um, we can move on to talk about what's going on in the Aquila world. All right. So one of the the, the like the keynote um, exciting news is that um, the first open source version of Aquila has been released um, last December. Um, so it's being called 6.5 Stable. 
all of the source code, documentation, add-ons, supporting tools, um, Blackboard plugins, uh, Moodle blocks, they're all available in GitHub. Um, anyone is welcome to go and take a look, download them, install them, build them, change them, um, and, it, and it's encouraged, right? And more community involvement is what's going to make the future of Aquila very exciting. In terms of, um, you know, what do you do when you find a bug or you want to suggest an enhancement? We'll talk about a little bit later about the various community channels, but the primary tracker is the GitHub issues for Aquila bugs and then Aquila enhancements and features um, that the community would like to see. Um, if you are familiar with GitHub, there is a release tab on the site for Aquila. Um, and if you go there, you will see the 6.5 stable release. This is a demo version. Um, it has the core components of Aquila that were able to be licensed under the Apache um, license, which was a requirement from Aperio. And there is a, um, when you build Aquila, you need a Java signing cert in order to sign the, um, the very, the, there's three jars that need to be signed for like the file manager, in place file editor, and those kind of things. And the demo version has a self signed certificate. Uh, we can talk about that in a little bit on what that means. Though it has only the core components on the, for the demo version, folks are free to include the Oracle database drivers and Kaltura integrations, which is the two primary components that we weren't able to include in the Aquila repo directly. So why, why 6.5? You know, why go through the effort? First of all, it's, it's absolutely free. So 6.4 QA4 um, was the latest Aquila commercial version. And so 6.5 stable marks, marks the, the movement into open source for Aquila. Um, there are security fixes in 6.5. There are numerous enhancements to workflow. One of those is you can now put scripts into workflow, further customizing um, how Aquila interacts with its users. Uh, email notifications can now be customized. So you can, you know, different headers and the language pack is more flexible when you want to, when you want to send out emails for bad URLs, notifications, or, you know, live item notifications. When you want to work on a task in workflow, you can now select you know, a set of tasks in bulk. And when you click approve or reject, it goes to the next task that you have selected instead of dropping you back to the main workflow page. And since 6.5 is open source, there's now a lot better support. Namely, you can go ahead and just change Aquila if you want to. Unicon and various other groups around the globe um, are also able to enhance the open source version, provide bug fixes and those kind of things. And like mentioned before, for the documentation, the release notes and the various guides that are um, pertinent to 6.5 are linked off of the main Aquila GitHub um, documentation site. So in terms of building Aquila, I wanted to just put this slide out here to show people how easy it is. You need three, three pieces of software in order to build Aquila. Git, which is you know, what GitHub's based off of, your code repository. You need SBT, uh, the simple build tool, which is, the, um, which is how Aquila is built. And then you need Java, uh, currently Java 8. And it's pretty straightforward to build via SBT. Um, if you go to the, the README off of the Aquila site or the Aquila GitHub site, it gives a little bit of detail, um, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. As mentioned before, getting a Java signing certificate that is, that is from a trusted entity, a trusted signing authority that is keyed to your institution is recommended, but it is optional. If you just want to just try out Aquila, you can just download get SBT Java, clone the Aquila repo, and build it. And then SBT will create a, your own, its own temporary signing certificate. The, this signing certificate is used for the admin console, the file manager, and the in-place file editor. You then need to choose optional components. 
Again, since they're optional, you can go ahead and build a Quella as is from the core repo without any concerns. But what you will not have if you do that is the ability to uh, use the Oracle database as a backend um, and Kaltura integration. Um, it's fairly, you know, simple to include those components. Um, there's directions out on the Aquila GitHub site on how to bring those over, and then you just and then just go ahead and build as as normal. Um, SPT handles all of your dependencies, right? So like any modern build tool, it'll pull down the libraries from the Maven repos. And so you really just have to worry about, you know, these these points that are up here, but you don't have to worry about, you know, are you using the latest libraries and whatnot, at least just to build a Quella. And then to build it, you just, you know, you invoke SBT, you say compile, and then you create your installer zip. And what comes out of that is the, uh, the zip file that we all know and love that you unzip, and then you run that enterprise installer jar. You go ahead, Drew. Uh, yep. Yeah. Hey, uh, this is Drew Wills again. Uh, I am going to come in here and talk a little bit about incubation with Aperio. The formal process of incubating uh, has kicked off. We had the initial call on uh, January 11th. Uh, it's important, I think, for me to mention here that incubation is the word that the Aperio community uses for the for the process of becoming a sponsored project. Incubation is a, a reflection, that word is a reflection of that process. Uh, it's not a reflection of the software or the code or the maturity of the, um, of the platform. But we are, uh, you know, with Aquella, we're in process uh, becoming an a, spon a sponsored Aperio project. That process is governed by you know, a, a series of uh, procedures laid out uh, by Aperio. You can read about them on the Aperio website. Uh, and it concludes with uh, a set of exit criteria. It's about, uh, if you were to visit that page, you can see maybe three quarters of the way down, uh, there's a section on exit criteria. I will, I can tell you the same thing that I mentioned on that call on the 11th, that these uh, exit criteria were, uh, you know, in view, taken very seriously, and, and in large part uh, addressed completely uh, last year as we worked to open source uh, Equella in the first place. So Unicon expects and the incubation group expects a, a speedy process, a speedy conclusion to uh, Equella incubation. Uh, I won't uh, attempt to quantify speedy. Uh, it is nevertheless uh, a bit of a bureaucratic effort, but in a, you know, a few months at the most, I would say we can probably look to bring this to conclusion. Thank you, Drew. And then for our community spotlight, John Fackrell from BYU Idaho, has um, is willing to present on a tool they developed called Aquila Sync. So I will stop sharing, and then John, if you want to take it away. So to introduce myself really quickly, I am the web services librarian at BYU Idaho, and I've been at BYU Idaho for about four years. Um, and I, I'm I'm going to do a live demo here, so I'm not going to go in, into full screen presentation mode. But I have a couple of bullet points I want to hit on on why we developed the Aquila Sync application and what we use it for, and then I'll, I'll show you how it works. So a little bit of background on our adoption of Aquila. Uh, it came in 2013 with Aquila 5.1, uh, which is just the year before I started here. So it was already in place, and uh, we were using it on campus. The purpose of of moving to Aquella was to replace Box on campus. Uh, a lot of the faculty had institutional Box accounts where they were storing files and editing those files and then putting links to Box content in their courses. And so really what we needed was a, an institutional repository, not for official uh, publications, but just learning ob objects in the courses and so Aquella uh, is our content delivery platform for a lot of that content. 
And then we also use it in the library for things like special collections and finding aids. And we're able to uh, catalog those with, with metadata, uh, which makes it easier to search. Um, so, you know, some of the benefits that we see of using Aquella are that the course content becomes searchable by all faculty, which facilitates its reuse. And we've seen that across departments where they can reuse content created uh, from other departments or other faculty within the same department. Um, and uh, another benefit uh, of moving to Aquella is that now all of our content or most of our content is behind the university login. So it's not just public where anyone with a link can access it. And then the other uh, benefit is that uh, not only do the individual faculty have access to edit items in the course, but our course support teams can go in and uh, update content, replace content, or fix broken links. So <clears throat> some of the hurdles that we've addressed or, or run into as we've tried to make this move uh, is uh, when contributing, uh, we have uh, a very lengthy wizard that requires faculty to input repetitive metadata for each item. And I can, I can show you what that looks like for us. Uh, but also, at, at times, the, the web interface can be sluggish, and so faculty get really frustrated with trying to add new items to Aquila. And then whenever they need to update an item, they have to go and find the item and then find the file in order to replace it. And so, in summary, faculty wanted to have more of a box-like experience, since that's what we were moving from. And so it was in December of 2014 that Matt Miles and myself kind of came up with this idea of could we use the Aquella API and create an application to interface with Aquella and make it similar to that box-like experience. And so we set out to do that and the major requirement was it had to be cross-platform. So as we're looking at different technologies to do this, uh, we we kind of leaned towards Python because we could create a Windows and an OS X uh, application. And so version one was that Python application and we used it for about a year. And then I learned about Electron JS, uh, which is uh, created by GitHub. And so I started working on version two. And so the current version that I'm going to show today is built on Electron and it uses Node.js and JavaScript or jQuery and, and HTML uh, to interact with the Aquila API. So <clears throat> let me jump over to our Aquila instance and show you what we have in place currently in the web interface. Uh, so if faculty want to contribute they would come into the faculty content, and that's where they're faced with uh, this wizard that requires several pieces of metadata. Some of those are uh, just a description of the content. Uh, we also ask for different file types, who should have access to it, uh, what kind of a class is it, and then we also have an academic correlation. So this is where if you're a new faculty or you're assigned to teach a new class, you could come in and you could look at anything that's being created for a particular course or created in a particular department. Um, so once they're done there, they can go to the, the copyright section and then you know they can create folders to organize those files. And then they can finally save this, this contribution. So, one of the first things we did is uh, in the application, and you'll see here a screenshot of a, of a user preferences screen. And this screen uh, pops up when the, when the application is first installed. And it asks for some of that information that the faculty member would, would put in uh, over and over. For instance, what is the default collection they're contributing to? What college and department they're in? The delivery mode and then they can, they can actually choose from an Aquila te taxonomy that we've created, uh, different courses that, are avail that they teach. So they're not displayed all of the courses, but they can set up the courses they teach here. And you'll see what that looks like uh, when you actually contribute an item. And then 
the availability is how we control if, if an item is public or if it's only available to a, a BYUI student or faculty. So let me just jump over here and I want to do a little demonstration of Aquila Sync. Um, when you launch the application, it starts watching a sync folder that you've pre-configured and just sits down in the tray here. So it watches that folder for any changes. This is the folder that it's, that it's actually watching is this Aquila sync folder. And you can see each folder within that sync folder represents a contribution in Aquila. And all of the files that are in that folder are attached to the contribution and, and display on the summary screen. So if I, were, if I wanted to add a new contribution, all I really need to do is drag a new folder into the sync directory. And Aquila Sync will wake up and start uh, looking at what's, where it's at and uh, what files are in there. And uh, all I need to do here is uh, type in a description. Um, oops. And my department is other, which is my default. Um, this is an online class and it's for LR111. I only teach one class, so I'll just go ahead and select that. And I can go ahead and publish it or I can save it as a draft. You can see it's processing and the contribution was created. Now at this point I can copy the link to my clipboard or I can go directly to the item. Uh, and while I was talking there, you could see this window over here pop up and all of those files were just uploaded to that contribution that were in that folder. So let's jump back over to uh, our browser here. And we can go to that item I just created and you can see uh, this is another um, script that we've created, but you're able to browse the files within this uh, contribution in a way that is similar to how you would access them on your computer. Um, and so that's another integration piece that we've created there. Um, if I jump back over to this icon for Aquila Sync, uh, you do have a couple of options and one of the most Powerful uh, things about Aquila Sync is this contribution manager. Um, a lot of our faculty do create, they do publish items, and but some of them do uh, put them in draft mode so that they're not searchable. It's content that they just don't want searched. So um, as faculty are looking at, oh, let me just go to my resources. As they're looking at my resources in the web interface, some of their resources will be published and some of them will be drafts. And uh, for them, the only reason they do this is so that some things won't be searchable by other people. But it can often cause confusion because they don't remember which ones are drafts and which ones are published, and so they have to go back and forth. Uh, with this contribution manager, all of, the all of the contributions are listed here together, so there's not that separation. Um, but by clicking on a title, you can see this demo one that I just created, I can now see all of the resources or files that have been added to this contribution. So I can go in and browse those. Um, another nice feature of Aquila Sync is that I can easily copy links for these items. So I can just click on the button and the link to this file is copied to my clipboard and I can add that into my course. Um, I'm probably not going to have time to go through all of the features here, um, but one of the things that is uh, somewhat equivalent to the edit in place in, in Aquila, the web version, is the ability to go ahead and download and open a file. So I can download the latest version of this file from Aquila and it opens automatically in the default uh, program, in this case it's Word. I can go ahead and edit this and I'm just going to make a small edit here and I'll save it and what we'll see is that Aquila Sync will wake up and it it just it was too fast it uploaded that file so now the latest version of this file is now in Aquila um, so I didn't have to go 
to uh, content.byy.edu and find the contribution and then find the file and uh, replace it that way. I just uh, can actually edit these files from my, from my computer. Um, the other way to do that would be to go into your sync folder and uh, open up the directory and I can, let's see, open up a file in, in Word. I'll make another small change and save it and you'll see it's gonna wake up and upload that file right to Aquila, uh, making it a lot easier for faculty to edit files that need updated as they, as they teach their courses. Um, uh, another thing that is, is nice about this contribution manager is the ability to search contributions. So I can easily do a search from my desktop here and find items. The default is to find any items that belong to me, and then I can go in and browse those files and get links. I also have some advanced search options so that I can look at all items, not just my own. And if, if they're not mine, I can still access them and download the files, but I won't be syncing to these contributions. So, um, doesn't look like there's anything there in that item, but I can still explore and discover uh, things that other, other faculty members have created and use that content, grab links. Um, so it's just a really nice way to, uh, to browse content within Aquila. I think that is all I had to present today. Um, let me just check here. Yeah, so if anyone has questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, John. Want to go yeah, ahead and um, question out there? No, I was just saying if John wanted to um, stop sharing, I'll, I'll grab it back. Oh. It was a really interesting presentation. Thank you, John. <laughs> You're welcome. It's a very attractive component. And it looks really slick. Can folks see my screen? Yes. Okay. So jumping over to sustaining engineering. So what did um, what did Unicon um, help? Well, actually, let me let me step back for a second. So what is sustaining engineering? Uh, so each Unicon subscriber, uh, open source support subscriber, or if they are with, um, or if they're hosted by Unicon um, and they have an app support agreement. Um, they increase Unicon's sustaining engineering ability. Um, and, and because they do, um, these subscribers help to prioritize sustaining engineering efforts. Um, the general way to do that is to open up a, um, an S5 Zendesk ticket, um, which we will then um, review and open a GitHub issue task, uh, tagged or labeled with Unicon SE. Um, and then um, and then work on it from there with the prioritization. Uh, I don't want it to be misunderstood though. Anyone can add a, a GitHub issue, right? Because it is part of the community. Um, this is just one way that we have chosen to track how to, um, you know what efforts we're working on, so the community can see it. You know, so you can go and search on the um, on the Aquila GitHub site for issues labeled with Unicon SE. Um, there's not a whole lot of them out there, but it will grow. All right, so in terms of what did we do um, since the last briefing, uh, we were able to um, get two uh, issues merged and we're in progress with another one. Uh, the first one was a bug that one of our open source subscribers um, was was hit with. Uh, they identified it. We we confirmed it, and then we, we went ahead and fixed it based on their recommendations that this would be a helpful sustaining engineering effort. Um, essentially, when you changed the resource metadata ACLs in a collection definition, um, especially with the discover item privilege, and then saved it, it did not always uh, force 
a re-index. And so you would go ahead and make that change and users that you'd expect to see these items now couldn't um, or vice versa. The next issue that was merged um, was just more detailed report and index logging. Um, this is an example of something that, you know, as we are, um, as we have been working with Aquila, uh, we noticed that this would be really helpful in terms of support. Um, so being able to know what report was run and when it, um, you know, if it failed and, and, you know, being able to have that key to look in the logs and say, yeah, this, this is the issue or this is the report that was having the issue. And also for index logging, um, currently like in the, um, in 6.4 or sorry, 6.5 stable, if you're indexing, uh, if you're doing a key, like a re-index of, of all your content for some reason, and you have a bunch of PDFs and they're encrypted, um, or there's some issue that Aquila cannot get into there and, um, and extract the text to be able to do the indexing on, it throws an error in the logs, but it doesn't tell you what file was failing. Um, and so we enhanced the, the logging around the indexer. Um, so it will tell you what item and what attachment had an issue. And, um, you know, those, those, they're turned off by default. So you do have to turn them on through the log for J properties file, but they are now available um, in the latest um, master commits. And then the, the third item that we are um, in progress with, um, this came from um, our, one of our open source support subscribers. Um, and, you know, we just asked them, what, what's a pain point of Aquila? You know, what would you like to see enhanced to, you know, to better serve your users? And this is one of the things they came up with. They, they felt that the number of clicks when you're trying to save an item where you click save and it opens a dialogue and you make another choice on what you want to do, um, it could be more efficient. And so we're in process of redesigning that and implementing that change. Um, so these are kind of like Aaron alluded to, you know, this is, this is just the start of, of what we can do with sustaining engineering. Uh, we want to hear from, we want to hear from the entire community, um, but in, in particular, our open source support subscribers and app support clients um, on issues that are important to you. Uh, we will send out, you know, we've sent out uh, queries to say, you know, what, you know, what would you find that would be helpful for sustaining engineering, but, you know, have it come the other way too. If you find something that would be, you think is useful, just shoot us a note through Zendesk and, uh, you know, let us have a chance to review it. I'll hand it off to Drew. Yeah, hey, uh, this is Drew Wills again. Uh, I wanted to come on and talk a little bit about an event that is coming up in uh, 2018. Uh, Open Aperio is the big Aperio conference uh, every year. This year it will be held in Montreal, uh, the North American conference. Aquila is, is new to Aperio. Aquila is new to open source, but for those of us who have worked with Aperio for a long time, on other projects. Uh, Open Aperio can really be the highlight of the year. Uh, I know that I am uh, looking forward to it immensely. Uh, I will be there, Chris Beach will be there, you know, a few other Uniconners will be there. Anyway, uh, the, can, next slide please. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, the dates are June 3rd through 7th, you know, Delta Marriott Hotel again in Montreal, Quebec. Another very important thing, uh, you actually still have time to submit a proposal if you want to. So we still have time for that EquelaSync presentation at, uh, at Open Aperio. So I'm, I'm counting on that. I'm looking, <laughs> looking forward to uh, you know, seeing that in the program uh, because I think that was very impressive. Uh, we know that there will be Equella content uh, at the conference. I'm not sure that there will be a solid a uh, three-day track of Aquila content, but there will be Aquila content there. And uh, if if Aquila as a project can start to get a, a foothold uh, in this conference, then I think we can expect, you know, we can count on really big things in the future. Uh, I know several other projects uh, in Aperio, they really use that conference as a place to uh, come together to find opportunities for collaboration, 
to talk about their pain points and the things that they most want to see done, and really to uh, organize a roadmap for the next 12, 12 months at this conference. So um, if, if you think that it's possibly something you could make, I encourage you to do so. Uh, you will get you know, a, a good amount of the Quella content there. You will also have the opportunity uh, to discover other fine uh, open source projects within Aperio. Uh, Aperio enjoys a, uh, you know, among the various projects in Aperio, uh, uh, Aperio enjoys sort of a non-trivial, uh, you know, a real amount opportunities for cross-pollination. I will be, you know, when I'm there, I'll be hoping to promote uh, Equella with other schools and organizations there that aren't already looking at it. And certainly I'd, I'd like to see uh, Equella schools maybe take a closer look at some of the other things that are available in Aperio. Uh, in addition to cross-pollination, uh, integrations between uh, Aperio projects are, you know, sort of common and, and promoted. The, I think that URL there, which you're unlikely to memorize and type into a browser, is the place you would go to submit a, a proposal uh, to do a presentation. Uh, if, if you think, you know, if you have any sort of sense that you might enjoy doing that, I encourage you to explore it. The, the time slots are only 45 minutes. Uh, it's not actually that difficult to organize content for 45 minutes. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, for example, the Aquila Sync, that would be a really big hit. Uh, next slide. I think that may be, may be all for me. Yeah, I'll say if you have any, you know, I know this is, you know, potentially very new information, but if you have any questions about Open Aperio, please contact myself or Chris or Aaron. We'll be happy to, um, you know, to help you get a sense of, uh, of what it's like and what you can expect. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So in terms of communication, how do we as a community, how do we talk about Aquella, uh, right? You know, our pain points or the features we'd like or, or really anything related to the, the application. Um, there is a, um, a Perio Aquella website out there. Uh, these slides will be shared so you can, you can get the links from there after we share them. There is an Aperio Google group. So if you send an email to um, that address, then you can get on there. And there's already been some activity on there, and I'm excited to um, hopefully see more um, in the in the next in the next while. Uh, there's an Aperio Slack channel um, that has also had some activities. Uh, like mentioned previously, the GitHub issue tracker for Aquella, and then there's also a um, a Twitter handle for Aquella. So what are the next steps out of this briefing? Um, the recorded session and the blog post kind of summarizing this session will be available soon on the Unicon site and also on the, our, our YouTube channel. Uh, we strongly uh, recommend that you consider attending Open Aperio 2018, um, not just for Aquila, right? There's a lot of information that can be gleaned um, when you know, open education minds get together and start discussing things. Um, please contact us if you have any questions on Unicon's Aquella offerings, and and please be active in the communication channels. You know, Aquella is open source now, and it's it's driven by it's driven by the community, um, and so the, the communication is key now. Uh, with that, our contact, um, my contact information, and Drew's contact information is up on the screen. Okay, if no one has anything else, then thank you so much for attending. Please check the Unicon website for the blog post and the recording, and we hope to see you again uh, next quarter at the quarterly briefing.